everybody. <coughs> uh, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is Robert Vogel. I'm working for um, the Halle Welt company from Germany. Our product is BlueSpace MediaWiki. Um, you can see it over there. Um, which is MediaWiki distribution. Um, it ships, I don't know, over 150, about 200 extensions. And it is regularly released. Um, we try to, to keep a yeah, regular uh, receipt the release uh, cycle to make sure that um, improvements and security releases are shipped quickly. Uh, today I want to share with you some experiences that we made throughout the last year. Um, it is about simultaneously editing, simultaneous editing. Uh, we usually call it edit together because it's much m easier to pronounce. Um, and yeah, so this is roughly my agenda for today. I will give you a quick uh, introduction on, uh, about the topic, where it comes from, how we, how we got there. Then I will uh, yeah, shed a little light on, on the technical base and the design decisions that we made um, when we came up with this, uh, with, this, with this extension. And then um, I want to also yeah, talk about what issues we um, had after we re released it, after we got it into production. And if there's sufficient time, I also want to give a quick demo. I don't know, don't know how, uh, how much time there will be left. Let's see. Yeah, so um, let's directly get started here. Um, first of all, simultaneously, simultaneous editing. Um, most of you already know that ty uh, kind of, of editing, editing experience, usually from Google Docs or Etherpad. And that's also where this uh, yeah, technology um, uh, comes from. So it dates uh, back to around 2011. <coughs> back then, Google Docs was already, was already a thing, and um, Etherpad as well. And they were used um, in the Media Wiki and the Wiki, Wikimedia Foundation already. And around that time, um, there were the fir first yeah, approaches to, uh, to create a visual editing experience in, uh, in Media Wiki. And that was seen as a chance because um, by introducing the visual editing, there were quite some, uh, some new introductions like the so-called linear data model, which features a transaction model, which basically keeps track of every change that happens on a page, <coughs> even if you're just editing a page um, on your own. And that was seen as a chance. Um, so they ca quickly came up with the idea to introducing such a feature in MediaWiki as well. Um, they started small with a, with, a, with a functionality called Colab Pad, which is actually built into the visual editor extensions to the current day. Um, it is currently not operational, <laughs> unfortunately, in the latest branches, um, but uh, around uh, MediaWiki 135 it actually was. So you could configure um, your uh, visual editor to feature that Colab Pad um, yeah, special page in this case. Um, the the ex experience, user experience, were very different from what you uh, would have in the uh, in the classic edit um, mode. So you did not navigate to a page, clicked on edit, and started editing. But you had a special page where you create basically a pad, very similar to what you may may know from the Etherpad. Basically, that's also where the name comes from. Um, there were mainly um, conceptual issues with that. Some technical issues as well, but mainly conceptual issues um, regarding the, um, yeah, the question around yeah, how to implement such a feature in the Wikipedia projects, um, where it is very important that everybody knows which author contributed to which part of a page, for example. And um, as you can see here from the timeline, there were some um, later approaches around 2017 to, to revive that project, but in the end, it didn't work out for them. Um, and since about 2019, there is only um, yeah, maintenance work being done. And even that is more or less automatic maintenance, means um, libraries are being updated, um, but that doesn't necessarily mean that the code is working since then. Um, so. Yeah, in 2023, 24, uh, uh, the Hollywood company picked up on that topic. Uh, we investigated uh, the state first and then uh, came up with a new extension. We called it Colab Pads, um, plural in this case. 
And yeah, we wanted to, to build upon that uh, existing work and yeah, improve maybe on several topics and um, yeah, allow uh, this kind of editing, simultaneous editing in a regular Media Wiki installation because we thought that this is probably uh, an interesting feature to, to uh, a lot of people and the conceptual issues that the Wikimedia Foundation may have had uh, is not necessarily the ones that we do have. So we don't, do not share the same um, mission. Um, but So we could probably live with a couple of those issues. So now let's talk about the technical side of this. Um, already already is, uh, mentioned a couple of those items. So um, everything is or was already built into the visual editor extension. Um, uh, some of this, this code we had to change for our use case and we copied over a couple of things and need to adapt a couple of things. Um, put it to this, um, to this uh, separate extension called color pads. This was necessary due to the um, fact that some of the code was just not maintained in the way that it uh, would have been required to do so and um, therefore we decided to yeah, copy over things basically and adapt them slightly. Uh, from a technical point of view, um, the, uh, the color pads extension introduces a new so-called target. Um, so there are already a couple of targets, editing targets in Wikimedia. Um, most familiar, the, mo the ones that you probably know are the desktop article target. That's the regular one that you use when you just click on the edit button on Wikipedia, for example. But also there's a, a so-called mobile target, which you may know if you have ever ever used the editing in, uh, in the mobile view um, of, of Wiki, Media Wiki. And yeah, basically color pads build upon that mechanism and it introduces a new color pad target. Um, yeah. um, that's on the client side. Um, there is a server side. We will have diagram uh, with that in, in another slide. Um, there's a server side that actually needs to manage um, uh, the different clients. So if you have multiple clients participating in a, an edit session, you need to make sure that the changes sent, sent by one client reaches the other clients and that they are um, in the proper order and uh, everything aligns. So in the original implementation, this was a Node.js application. And we, we checked on that, we investigated it. And the interesting part of that is that it actually shares code with Visual Editor itself, uh, which was a challenge um, later on for us. Um, because we had to re-implement a couple of things. We decided to not <coughs> go with the um, original Node.js implementation, but to switch to a PHP-based implementation for a couple of reasons. Um, first of all, um, it w we f f thought it was easier for us to maintain, and um, the, yeah, the Node.js implementation also had some, some issues reg in, in regards to the library that they were using, and we found a it's more easy to, for us to, to basically build upon a, uh, a PHP here. Also, we had to, to implement some additions um, to the server side, which I will talk about now. So um, this shows roughly how, uh, the, how the, the application or the, the extension works. Um, so we have multiple clients down here which want to collaborate on an edit. There is a server part, the so-called backend, um, which um, the, the clients communicate with. Uh, at first, when a new session, a new collaboration session is um, started, uh, a completely new document is being created, and then if somebody joins, this document is completely sent uh, as, a as a whole to the new clients. Every time a, a new change apply, uh, occurs then on any of the clients, the clients send that to the backend, which makes sure that every client gets the um, gets the uh, the change, and also um, it it keeps a, um, a document stored on the backend itself. For example, if another client here, number number five, if Charlie jo joins, he will get the the latest um, document as well, so he's um, he's up to date with the the other, other changes. Um, on the, the color back, backend does not just send, uh, receive and send changes, it also applies some um, rebasing, has some rebasing logic to make sure that the, the changes are sent in a, yeah, in, a, in a proper order and they do not conflict with, that, with, with each other, other, basically 
um, does some kind of a conflict resolution here to make thing uh, to make sure that the things do not get asynchronous um, between the clients. Okay, now um, regarding the design decisions that we had to make, or the, um, um, so as I pointed out a little bit earlier, the original implementation was a standalone um, uh, special page, which was um, independent from any actual page on the wiki. You could collaborate on this, this special page, and then you had to export um, the results to some real wiki page, which was a little bit, um, yeah, hard to understand for people. It's, it's not the, the user experience that we, we wanted to have. And therefore, the, one of the first decisions was that we wanted to have it integrated just like any other editing um, mode that you might may know from the wiki. Like there is the, 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 the classic um, the wiki text or visual editing mode. There may be something like a form editing mode. And now we also added um, the so-called edit together um, mode. Um, which you can start on any page, on any wiki, wiki text page of the wiki. Um, obviously, it is important to make sure that um, in order to prevent edit conflicts or um, situations where content is being overwritten, um, we need to make sure that we block uh, other edit modes while a collaborative session is running. Um, otherwise, there, wa there, there was the risk that somebody edits the page uh, in the, uh, independent from the from the collab session, and um, this ch these changes would be lost after a save from the collab session. Um, we also wanted to make sure that uh, joining a session is as uh, easy as possible. So we had we invited uh, we, we introduced some invite link mechanism that you can just send over an, an instant messaging tool. Um, and one thing that we dropped pretty early was um, the concept of private session that was discussed internally. If we would, would want to make basically lockdown sessions and only allow a certain set of, of editors to join, we decided against that, for mainly for complexity reasons and user experience reasons. It would have added an additional uh, layer of complexity. And yeah, so that's, that's the main design decisions. There are more design decisions. One is we wanted to have, or we, we needed to have some kind of an authorization mechanism. That is a main difference to what the, the original implementation did. The, in the original implementation, everybody that had physical access to um, the backend service was able to basically join a session and read and retrieve a document, regardless of whether they had actual access, uh, access permissions to that document or not. Now that as we're um, operating a lot in, in corporate environments, um, access control is important to us, and we need to make sure that um, nobody can yeah, join a session uh, to to a page that they are not even able uh, allowed to to edit or to um, to see. So we added uh, a authorization step into that. You can see that's from the diagram. It roughly works like that. Um, so when the client connects, um, it will send a token. Um, this token will then again be sent to the wiki by our um, by our backend service, and the wiki verifies that this that this token is valid, and this user that tries to connect is allowed to connect. And after that, everything, yeah, um, everything, the, the connection is being established, and we have get a persistent WebSocket connection. <clears throat> um, and a last slide regarding the design decisions is about the safe um, and uh, safe and session handling mechanisms um, of this uh, yeah, of this extension um, as I explained uh, in the beginning the original implementation by basically just editing and then exporting to one page creating one edit being assigned to one user that is not what we wanted to have um, so we wanted to allow the people to, to save and then, we, first of all, we wanted to record um, the people that there were in the session. So um, you can still not tell who of the participants um, uh, contributed which part of the, con the, the page. That's not possible, so we, we cannot distinguish this uh, at this level. But at least we can record who was, um, uh, who was involved when this change uh, created, was created. So um, 
One important thing is that we record who is in the, in the session when a change happens. So this can be seen here. Um, so for example, when, when three people have been, uh, have been editing and somebody saves, we get a revision that mentions all the three people. Um, when after that only two of the, them uh, um, edit and one is still in the session, we still want them to be on the, on the list because even though they didn't type something, they were still in the session. You know, those sessions are usually backed up with um, with a meeting, with online meeting. So just just because th this person didn't type something doesn't mean that they didn't contribute. So we're still recording them. But then, if after a save um, somebody leaves and then some additional editing happens, then this person is <coughs> not part of the next. Um, the next uh, safe, basically. So that's the the concept that we build up uh, built here. And there's also something that is um, that this kind of di this this diagram implies. That is that you can save and keep the session running. That is um, different. So usually different from the from the um, from the classic edit mode, where, where you click save and then basically you leave. Basically, after clicking save, you leave this edit session. This doesn't happen here. You can click save as uh, many times as you want to during a session, and you will not, uh, and the session will not close. It will just stay there. And you can also leave even if a session is still running. You can keep an, a session open, basically keeping notes uh, in an unpersisted way. So you can start typing. You can leave the session. You can go home, and next next day you get uh, you get back into the same session, um, but the, the changes will not be saved in the meantime. Um, we then found that it make, still makes sense to end the session at some point, so we implemented some, uh, some logic that basically checks if somebody is the last person in a session, and if this guy saves, then we actually end the session. Because it, there's no, there's no uh, yeah, it doesn't make sense to keep it open if there's no further change anymore, and this, this person is the last uh, one to save. Okay, um, talking about the lessons learned. So, as I said, we implemented this in, we started implementation in 2023. We um, put it into production in 2024. And uh, there were a lot of, um, yeah, this was a lot of work and we, uh, um, we had to, to deal with some troubles here. And there are some things that we learned. First of all, this all, based, uh, this all builds a, a technically on WebSockets. And WebSocket is, what well, it is a pretty, uh, common and uh, fam uh, pop uh, popular technology is still not very uh, easy to, to use. Um, and especially when you use libraries, um, there are, we are using libraries for WebSocket for PHP and for JavaScript. And it turns out that um, there can be incompatibilities um, between those things. And we, we needed to match uh, versions here, which was not that, that simple always especially as um, the Wikimedia Foundation, uh, they bumped uh, their, their JavaScript library, which was then not compatible anymore, uh, not, not just to our backend, but even to their backend, and that took some time to understand and to, um, to work out. Um, also, regarding that, um, that authorization mechanism, we, uh, we first we tried to use cookie forwarding, uh, but quickly found that this implies some kind of a rela uh, relationship between uh, the service consumer and the, and the backend. Um, <coughs> and then we had to switch to the token mechanism because we wanted to have one backend support multiple instances of MediaWiki. That's very important for our um, farming approach, for example. And also, this is very important, um, obviously, as you can leave sessions open, they need to be... Uh, written as production data. You cannot just clear out the database or lose session data when restarting the service because people might leave the sessions open with important data in it. So you need to make sure that these um, things survive a restart and can be backed and restored. And that's also not that simple. Um, with, uh, with MongoDB in the background, it can be done, but th this was um, uh, yeah, something that we had to learn. Last but not least, uh, the rebasing of the changes, uh, things that we re-implemented from the original um, uh, code, uh, we found that to be very, yeah, 
it, it can be really challenging. It's a lot of lo a lot of very complicated um, logic that needs to be that need to be maintained. Yes. Okay. What about the time? Still okay. Good. Um, let's move on. And uh, now we finally have released it to the public. So we had it in production um, throughout the year already in our cloud hosting and on customer installations. Uh, but we finally made it uh, in time for this conference to publish the code on MediaWiki.org. Um, so it is a regular MediaWiki extension. It is independent from Blue Spice. Um, it can be installed actually currently without Composer, even though I would recommend using Composer. But in, uh, at, at the moment, it doesn't have any additional dependencies, so it can be uh, uh, installed without Composer. It does have some uh, inter-extension dependencies, obviously Visual Editor, but also the OOGS Plus um, extension, which is maintained by us. Yeah, we're using some... some uh, some parts of the user interface from that. <coughs> um, we're going to uh, release this uh, regularly, so together with our uh, our um, distribution releases, we're going to also release new versions of this extension. So at the moment on the Garrett repos, there is no tag release yet, but very soon there will be one, and I recommend everybody uh, who's interested in using it to stick to the tag releases uh, because those are the ones that we have actually, yeah, that we actually release to the public. You can also use the rail branches, but there may be, uh, yeah, late uh, new changes in there. Um, in general, we stick to long-term support. This is true for all of our extensions. Um, so currently, we have built this against 139, but there will very soon be a version for 143 as well. Um, and also that is that's very important. So the, the backend service is a, is independent from MediaWiki. It's not run by MediaWiki. It's an independent service. And to ease um, the setup of this, we have included a Docker uh, file, which basically uh, contains everything. You can easily build that container. It is not available at the moment from any registry, um, uh, from any public registry, but you can easily build the the service. A container on your own, and uh, as a yeah, just as a, some hints here, if you want to use it, um, make sure that your backend service has a, a way to communicate through HTTP with the wiki itself. It needs that for the permission check; otherwise, you will end up with a lot of errors. And also, what I can recommend is um, to use some kind of a proxy um, to. Yeah, to just mask a non-standard port. So by default, the service runs on a non-standard port, and you usually don't want to expose this um, in, in a uh, production, production environment. So what we do is we just use a, a regular um, HTTP proxy that that looks for some some path, um, and then just just translate it and translate it and send it sends it to the to the service. Okay. Now let's see, quick demo. Um, let's see, I have open, I have opened two browser, browser windows. In this case, I'm logged in with two different users. Uh, this one is the user Alice, and this one is the user Bob. And I have a small page here. Um, by the way, this is uh, obviously the not a regular MediaWiki interface, but it's, but it's Blue Spice, but uh, in MediaWiki it will work very similar. Um, it, the, 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 uh, the, the links may be in a different place. Um, depends a little bit on the skin. But here in our, in our skin, we have it um, in our edit menu. And as you can see, there is now uh, another, uh, another option called edit together, um, which will yeah, start the new mode. There's a, there's a small welcoming message telling the user that they are entering a new kind of, of edit mode. I can now, um, first of all, I can see who is connected and I can um, copy the, the link to this session directly into my clipboard so I can share it through a, um, yeah, some instant messaging tool. And yeah, that's it. Basically, the, the session has already begun. Um, so I can just type and it, uh, nothing special about that. Um, here on the other 
um, half of the screen, you can see that there is a message being displayed. Um, uh, and yeah, it basically tells any user that visits this page that there's, uh, there's a, um, an edit, uh, edit session running. Let me quickly reload that to show you that here, for example, I even, uh, so now the, the other edit modes are blocked. I cannot go into a source code anymore. I can only uh, join the session. And it doesn't matter if I click this link or this link. It's, it's the same thing. Just, I just go in here, yeah, enter this. Now you can see the different cursors, and I can start typing. And this is now, um, yeah, as you can see, it's simultaneously. I cannot show it with, with, with any more users um, because the screen will be <laughs> too small then, but uh, obviously multiple people can join. And now you can see if I just save the changes, for example, the, um, the, uh, uh, yeah, the session remains open. You can also insert some image here. So I use this image. Insert gets displayed here as well. Can save it again. Now people can also leave the session, so gives you a quick information that the changes will not be lost. They they will remain. <coughs> if I yeah. and now if I do some change here and save it, now this for example will end the session. Let's have a quick look at how um, this looks like in <coughs> history. By the way, this is not the regular um, history view that you might know, may know from MediaWiki. That's a different uh, interface that we have, um, which already shows the participants um, of the change. Okay. Um, let's quickly finish my slides, and then we can go over to um, to questions. So yeah, uh, last slide basically, our future plans, well, <coughs> as I said, uh, as I already said, um, uh, backup and restore is a little bit odd currently how we do it. Um, we will probably add some more um, tooling here into the extension to, to ease these kind of tasks. We're also probably going to add some more management functionality, um, for example, to um, to yeah, delete uh, sessions um, and to to deal with, with errors if they're uh, if errors occur. Some er sometimes errors occur, so there there will be some more there will be some more management functionality um, for that. And one thing that we're aiming for um, is to actually make edit together the default. Um, edit mode. So it depends a little bit on how things go, but the idea would be to actually make it the default so people cannot even yeah, not use it basically and uh, people can uh, can directly join. That would be, from our understanding, that would be the best user experience that we can provide. <coughs> and that's it. So. Two, two quick questions. I think you answered maybe one at the end there, but um, there might be some kind of uh, um, functionality for an admin to delete or, or close out a dangling or abandoned session. Yeah, at the moment there's not, um, but we're thinking about that because it, it turns out that this may be required. Yeah. <laughs> then the second one is just about uh, the you know specific um, you know per chunk um, attribution. You said you know right now it's it's not it's not possible. Is that uh, not currently possible, or do you think that's just not possible at all? I don't think that it is possible at all. That's due to the, due to the nature of uh, wiki text. Mm -hmm. um, so we we thought about introducing such a thing by basically marking up sections of the text, adding spans with IDs or something like that, uh, which probably would work to some degree, but. Um, well, it messes up the wiki text, which we don't want to do, <laughs> and um, it's pretty difficult, um, especially if you see 
if you're overriding something from a other user, for example, um, you will end up with, with a <coughs> yeah with a very very odd pattern of changes. And I'm not convinced that this is really beneficial to for the user in the end. Thank you. Thanks, Robert. Very interesting. Uh, what do the changes look like in the in the ordinary history? They look, if you use a version, version compare now, they look just the same as, as always. There are multiple uh, authors in the, in the history. But what I do you mean? I've never seen that. Well, the, the multiple uh, editors. No, it, it, actually, in, only in the history review, it will tell that this particular revision has been created by multiple <coughs> editors. That's all. Now, if you start comparing stuff, you will just see the regular comparison between the versions. That's, there's no, no additional information to that. Um, it is very tightly bound to Visual Editor, actually, um, due to the nature of the, the code. We adopted a lot of code that, were, that was originally coming from the, um, from the uh, foundation. And I don't think that we can expand this easily to other edit modes. What about the source editor within the um, To be honest, I'm not entirely sure. Um, it doesn't feature that right away, um, and we didn't look too deep into that yet. So first I want to say this is a very interesting feature, and I look forward to testing this out, I don't know, later today or sometime this week. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'll start a local wiki with it. Um, just poking around in the code, I saw that the, the way that you're storing multiple editors for a single revision is in a separate table. That seems like a very useful feature separate from the real-time collaboration to be able to associate multiple authors that edit. Are there any plans to release that as a separate sub-feature? No, actually not. Um, and actually, I'm, I'm not entirely sure anymore why we use a, a table. I think we discussed using slots, for example, content slots to store that to, together with the revision. But for some reason, we decided to use a dedicated table. I cannot recall why. <laughs> um, uh, but no, we are not planning to, to split this in any way. I also want to echo that a lot of this seems incredibly cool, even if just one person is editing at a time with the ability to save but not save the page so that you like save, oh, and then you're not worried about your computer crashing or it's saving and then uh, if you close out of a session, your edit is still there when you get back. Um, so even if I think for my use case, the multiple revision, like multiple editors at the same time might not be like the most useful thing. All of these features seem amazing for just a single editor. So is that something that you would see releasing? Well, as I said, we were planning to do the, to make this the um, the default edit mode, anyways. So, regardless of whether you want other people to join or not, at some point, at least in Blue Spice, we hope that this will be the main editing mode. Um, uh, and yeah, the 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 Media Wiki extension itself will then get some kind of a, a, a configuration, which will make it behave the same in a regular Media Wiki. So. Yeah, th that could totally be done, and I'm I'm convinced that still, e even if we have this as the as the default um, editor mode, many people will just edit on their own. And, um, so yeah. Okay, thank you very much, Robert. Um, Thanks. Before we go to the last break, some organizational remarks and maybe also a, a short remark on this feature. While we all think that's very exciting, me too, actually. Um, uh, people coming from Confluence uh, have, have this, yeah. So uh, it's it's a feature we have to look in. You know, uh, organizations decide whether to use Confluence or MediaWiki, and they they might look into this exact feature. And um, by the way, I also want to introduce Carsten Eames, our keynote speaker here from Siemens, uh, because he's here already. He will give his uh, keynote tomorrow. But in case you want to talk to him about it, uh, about things like that. Because uh, at Siemens they use Confluence, um, so uh, <laughs> yeah, you can. You can, you can. <laughs> it's not uncommon on Siemens to do Confluence. 
let me comment on your, so thanks uh, for your talk and demonstration. Um, let me comment on your decision, basically, uh, that if I understood correctly, you dropped the, like, the granularity, granularity, who did what, which to some extent would lead which person was editing which uh, letter. Exactly. So you run into a rabbit hole of complexity. And so yes, exactly. And, and so, yeah, that might be, uh, so I completely understand the business decision, is especially if you compare it to conference, right? <laughs> which has the similar display, like who was editing in that session and that's it. And so I would say that's sufficient for most businesses. I even have the problems to imagine wh wh why you would need this super hyper granularity yeah, uh, I, so agree, like I, I agree with you. Yeah, <laughs> forensic uh, use cases or whatever. But so I understand the business decision and so good luck with that. I mean, conference also exactly. has a second server, a synchronous server. They, there are also problems with it and challenges. Yeah, so <laughs> good luck. Thank you.